Welcome back to another edition of your Adrenal Fix, where we teach exhausted and burnt out adults the truth about their health so that they can get their health back quickly. And I'm joined with an exciting colleague of ours and mentor and friend, um, Dr. Kelly Halderman. She has a background in functional medicine. She's earned her medical degree in 2007, and she's completed her family medicine internship at the University of Minnesota in 2019. She's an educator. She's a formulator. She's uh, um, always on the cutting edge. And I invited her to come back onto our show because we could hear about what's new and exciting in Kelly's world. So Kelly, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Dr. Jill. It's great to be back. I think this may be my third time. This so. is part three. Yes, this is All part right. three. Yes. Awesome. Yes. And we'll put the other links to the parts and maybe we can kind of springboard from there because the part ones and twos, we were talking about detox 2.5 and the role that that plays in health. So maybe let's just maybe give the, the Reader's Digest version of that so that can kind of bring us into what we're talking about today. Yeah, that's a great place to start. I'm kind of known for uh, being uh, the detox uh, queen. So obviously it's important. And, you know, phase 2.5. So we all know that we have detoxification mechanisms in our body. And um, up until about five years ago, um, I didn't even know about phase 2.5. And I actually named it that because it's the phase of detoxification that literally saved my life. We know that the liver is the workhorse of detoxification. When we think about it, we have phase zero where the toxin is entering the liver, phase one where it's being transformed, phase two where it's being made water soluble because the goal when you have toxins in your body is to get them out via your bile. Now you can sweat them out. You know, there's different ways to get toxins out, but really in the, in the liver, we need to make them water soluble because the bile is mostly water. It's aqueous. It's an aqueous solution. So your, your liver makes the bile, the bile gets squeezed um, into where it ends up in the colon. And then we're looking at it ending up in the toilet. So that's great. So, but the, the caveat is, is that when the, when the toxin is made water soluble, you have to get, you have to get that pretty toxin like into the bile. And there's this step and it is literally so important that I, I named it. Cause I'm like, let's pay attention to 2.5. And that step involves getting it through the, it's called the um, membrane coniculus um, to get to the bile. Right. So that step right there, we have to make sure that that transporter is open um, what shuts that down, that phase 2.5, getting the toxin out into, you know, into the toilet instead of back in your blood is inflammation. So that's a huge thing. Dehydration. So if you're, if you're dehydrated and you don't have any bile moving and you're, you're kind of stuck with that, with that toxin, there's some other things, but, but really that, um, that premise right there of getting that movement going in the body. And I actually wrote a book about this and it's soon to be released. Um, and we'll come back and talk about that, but go back to the other podcast. We really go in, in depth on, on that, but detoxification in and of itself is, is something that, uh, again, it's, it saved my life to really get it going and, and properly, uh, get the, those phases going and not just do some random detox. And, um, Joel, I've learned from you too. We kind of put our heads together about like, what's the best way to do this. And we've had so much success, weight loss. I mean, hormonal balances, everything in your body, it, it really depends on you keeping the movement of toxins out. Right. No, that's excellent, Cher. Um, and it, it kind of points to the fact that a lot of people have it on their radar that are sick and dealing with major health challenges. Oh, I know I got to do a liver detox. I got to do a juice cleanse. I, I, I need to get rid of these toxins that are building up in my body. People know they're toxic and realize mm -hmm. that they have to do some kind of protocols, but what mm -hmm. they don't realize is sort of that perfect storm of inflammation shutting down that 2.5 window, but also that combination of there might be some genetic susceptibilities that make that a lot more difficult and you need to support that. And it's not just take your um, artichoke, dandelion and milk thistle and juice cleanse and, and everything's just going to be fine. So more nuanced, as it, yep. yeah, as it relates to you, Kelly, what was yeah. it on the 2.5 that besides the inflammation or was there any other factors that had made it more challenging for you up until learning about the 2.5 little window that they go through that made it difficult for you to you know, save your life, you said that you were yeah. struggling so hard with? 
Yeah, two things is that I had my gallbladder taken out at the ripe age of 20 for no good reason. And on the pathology report, they're like completely normal gall gallbladder. So um, disappointed that, that that had to go because it's not a vestigial organ. It's a very important organ and it's one of the number one surgeries that we do here in the United States, probably around the world. And we don't have to do it if we can keep the bile flowing. My other problem was that, like you said, Dr. Joel, I had genetic susceptibility. I wasn't good at making bile. I wasn't good at making phosphatidylcholine. And so that's what makes your bile actually flow as well. So some problems stacked up against me. And it's, it's only until I really dug into the genetics, you know, thank God for Bob Miller, um, and, and his software and his genetic reports that I was able to see it and fix it, right? So when you know better, you, you do better. But I will say is that I've, I've taken a little turn in my career. About a year ago, I decided that um, I have these headhunters coming after me and asking me, do I want to do this and do that? And, and I, I came across this biotech company and the name of it is WIO. And um, their technology, the technology, I'm actually the chief medical officer, it actually transforms normal hydration, normal water, it transforms water into a water that can decrease oxidative stress, um, a water that is structured. And this month of June is we celebrate, it's called the great outdoors month. And I always think like, we're trying to get outside, we're trying to get our steps in, we're trying to be in nature, but it's hard, but drinking wheel water actually brings nature into you. And how that relates to detox, Joel, you know, it's everything. It's everything. If you're dehydrated, which, you know, like the stats are out there, they're kind of like a little bit of a big range, but, but the majority of people walking around are hypohydrated. And that's when I was like, you know what, I really think I can make a difference in the world. And that's truly, I mean, it sounds kind of glib, but that, I mean, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to help the most people that I can have the biggest impact. And so, you know, joining the company and optimizing like the clinical trials that we're doing, um, and looking at the high impact, because guys, we all have to drink water and water's boring. And we've been told for, since we were little, like, okay, drink your eight glasses of water. And, but the higher impact is, is that the company that I work for, we can have a water that's infused with many more biomolecules, those biomolecules, one of which is molecular hydrogen, your audience may be familiar with that. It actually will um, open up that MRP2 channel. So it'll actually help the bile and help move out um, those toxins. And then again, go back to the properties of water. Your, your bile is water. You know, you can't poop without having proper, proper hydration. So that's kind of how I, I transition out, transition to this company. But but really, um, you know, I'm looking at a, a whole different use of, of water, you know, because again, we have to drink it. Why don't we get like so many more properties packed into it? Yeah, that's awesome. We can go so many different ways and I want to yeah. go down some of those. So ultimately the, what I always say too, is because, you know, I, I initially started off with my own health challenge of adrenal fatigue. And now I've gone down the rabbit hole of it's, a, it's really an energy fatigue. You're not creating energy at the cellular level. And when you look at high school chemistry and all of those things that give you sort of the hairs at the, you know, neck hair stand up, cause you don't yeah. want to study that stuff. But either way, I, the easiest formula that I explain to people that they forget, especially practicing doctors is food plus um, oxygen equals energy plus water. And mm -hmm. so that's what ultimately happens is if we're not combining the food we eat with the air we breathe effectively, not only are we not producing enough energy, we're not producing enough water. So I guess I'll play devil's advocate. Why can't, I mean, most people understand this question, but maybe from your insights, why can't I just drink filtered water or try not to drink, or maybe talk about the dangers of God forbid, someone's just drinking tap water. Um, but let's maybe kind of go through the, from the, the evolution of, you know, structured wheel water from just out of the tap kind of thing. Sure. So um, PSA, don't drink tap water. If, right. if you don't trust us, like go to your uh, if you get local nothing website. outside of this webinar or this yeah. seminar, today, just don't drink tap water any longer. Don't do it. Just filter it somehow. Like just right. go for your, I mean, we could go down a rabbit hole filtering water, but we're not going to do it because there's so many different filters. Um, but so why, why drink, why, why, um, choose wheel water. And I'm going to show you one of our, our bottles right. right here. This is our um, electrolysis, our diamond, boron coated diamond uh, doped electrodes are in here. 
And so I pour the water in, I press the button. This is and a glass. Pour, the, pour filtered water in there. I mean, could I, you just put tap water in there? Or you, obviously you're not advising to do that. Like, tell me maybe what would happen if you put just ordinary tap water in there? So there's no harm done if you put ordinary tap water. Some places around the United States have good tap water. But you just have to go to your website and look up, you know, like your county and see the water right. reports. Mine, right. no way would I drink my water. Right, right. Um, so... You, you know, you pour you pour it in. If you pour tap water in, the only caveat we have is that um, electrolysis can change a little bit of the chloride, chlorine, and make it a little bit smelly like a pool, just a hint of a pool. So it just kind of smells different. Nothing bad is going to happen to you. The, if it's the tap water. Right? If it's the tap water. Right, now right. let's say, um, you. so I have where um, I, if you go to findaspring.com, you can find like natural glacial spring water and that's like the gold standard. So I have one two miles down the road. I use that. Now people can use uh, reverse osmosis water. They can use your Fiji water. It doesn't really even matter. But um, what we're doing here is this is a glass bottle. So we're like cutting down on the plastics because I am a huge non-fan of drinking out of plastics. You guys, your estrogen, bad estrogen levels are already probably too high. And then you're just tipping yourself with like drinking bottled water. I'm like, we got to. Right. If it wasn't enough, if it was tapped water, it's also bottled water that's in leached in with the plastics yeah. that create even more challenges. And just if you don't want to get anything else out of this, you know, this video today, except stop drinking plastic okay. bottled watered with top, then you're already ahead of the game. So you are anyway, so ahead so, of the game. Yeah. So yeah. then if you want to upgrade your water, right, like if you right. wanted to do all these amazing properties, which I'll go, I'll, I'll go through. You pour your water in, you electrolyze it for 30 seconds, and you've just created dissolved oxygen, molecular hydrogen, you've restructured your water. Studies have shown that it uh, decreases oxidative stress, inflammation, um, helps with, there's some studies on actually um, body mass index, so your fat um, stores. So, so water in of itself, hydration can help with burning fat, but this particular molecule and blend can actually help um, in studies in humans help with metabolics, metabolic, um, you know, health. And, and what are, is it one in three people have um, pre-diabetes and the stats at metabolic syndrome. That's like when you get to the end and your meta metabolism is just lost, um, you know, I'm into prevention. So there's biomolecules in there. Um, you know, we, it has anti-aging um, properties in there. I wrote an entire book on the, the hallmarks of aging. So there's 12 hallmarks of aging. So it's like, everyone's like, why do we age? Because nobody wants to age, right? I mean, we want to get older. We don't want to age. Well, there's 12 mechanisms. The wheel water components actually address and combat all 12, all 12. And one of those is dysbiosis. You know what? If you got a bad gut, first of all, go see Dr. Joel. He'll fix you. But if you got a bad gut, you're, you're aging yourself. Chronic inflammation is a hallmark of aging. Of course it is when we're inflamed. Um, so dysbiosis, the, the molecular hydrogen, one of the components, it actually helps to feed your good bacteria and not your bad bacteria. So you can have some, some gains in that. I mean, there's so many more studies. Exercise performance has been done clinical trials saying that drinking um, components of wheel water, you're going to have a better workout, less fatigue at the end. So really, um, you know, more information, if you really want to go looking about skin, immunity, digestion, all those, those, um, those attributes to why you'd want to like up your water game. It's at weo.com, W-E-O.com. Um, but I mean, I do lectures for doctors all over, you know, of tons of um, anti-aging, all kinds of seminars on neuroinflammation, neuro brain and gut. And it's like, you know, it seems so simple. Like, how can this water do this? But we're like partnering with all kinds of universities all over the world. We've been around for 15 years. We've, um, we actually have had tons of success in agriculture. So the food you eat is being fed by wheel water. Right now we're having better quality um, animals, better healthier animals, less pesticide, less uh, antibiotics, healthier crops. We increased egg production on one farm by 33% just drinking our water. So, you know, the research that we have is, is mind blowing. That's part of why I came to this company again, because we're partnering with um, UF, um, you know, Michigan, we're doing scanning tunnel, tunneling microscopy to compare our water. So it's, it's really like just this really simple thing that you can do and just get a lot of bang for your buck. 
Yeah, that's awesome. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. So when you have structured water and you're creating ionizing um, changes to that water and hydrogen and other, I, oxygen is being liberated, um, mm -hmm. is it true to say, because that you know, from what Bob teaches and having your inflammatory enzymes um, upregulated, that's spilling off free radicals, which aren't bad, right? In his words, they're, they're not bad until they are, right? So if we have all these environmental factors, whether it's the exhaust and the pesticides or EMFs or histamines or smoking particulates, I mean, the list goes on and on, goes on and on. your body will produce those two major uh, oxidative reactive species in terms of um, hydrogen peroxide and superoxide, which are good. You want that to, to kill pathogens and other chemical signalers so that your body goes into defense mode. But if it's on all the time, then you see a higher uh, presentation um, of, of autoimmunities and you see um, all of these maybe challenges with long COVID. Um, so what happens is with those ionizing parts of structured water, it's actually creating those free radicals into more water, right? Because mm -hmm. what it's doing mm -hmm. is it's donating electrons so that you're converting those chemicals into water. Is that correct? So by, by, by actually taking the water, you're creating more water. Is, is that, is that accurate to say? Yes, you actually are inherently creating more, more water. An excellent point. You are so spot on genius with your biochemistry. I don't know how you, you keep it all. Like mm -hmm. right. I, I know I can see you seeing the pathways right now. You're just like eh, the Fenton reaction. Right. This is a good point to, to, to mention that the component in wheel water is actually a selective antioxidant. And you made an excellent point is that it's a balance, right? You know, that's why we look at the studies with antioxidants and they don't turn out very well because antioxidants like typically like vitamin C and things and, and um, high doses of vitamin E is that you're, you're literally taking all the oxidants in your body and you're flaming them out. But it's a balance because we need some. We need some to fight pathogens. So molecular hydrogen actually goes in and it only quenches the the free radicals like the hydroxyl radical and peroxy nitrite radical that cause damage because there are free radicals in your body, like you just mentioned, hydrogen peroxide, superoxide that that have signaling molecule um, positive effects, right? So you want to be selective with your antioxidants. I wrote a blog post on this. And again, it's, it's all about balance and this water, it does it for you. It, it selectively goes in your body and just squelches out what, what shouldn't be there. And then secondly, you mentioned um, some of those pathways started me thinking about the NERF2 pathway. I'm sure your listeners are familiar with the NERF2. Sulforaphane is a great compound that activates that anti-aging, that, that um, antioxidant pathway in your body, inside your body molecular hydrogen actually activates that. So by drinking it, you're activating the production of glutathione and other positive antioxidants in your body as well, endogenous ones. Right, right. That's a really good point. Um, as far as, I just had a great question that I was just listening to what you were saying. Oh yeah. So um, I, I know with uh, some uh, hydrogen water capsules, um, I just kind of found this out from Bob the other day. I asked him off camera, hey, I've had some patients of ours that when they do those H2 absorb or whatever they mm -hmm. are in terms of getting the capsules, you put it in water, you yep. see it fizz, you got to make sure you drink it quickly. Otherwise, all that hydrogen sort of burns um, off. Um, but if there's too much uh, hydrogen gas from a from a intestinal bacteria overgrowth presentation, they'll have a little bit of a kicking up of the ocean floor. And it's actually a good pulsing uh, test to determine, hey, sure. you, you got some stuff going on here, you, you got to address. Um, does there have any ill effects or if there's someone that's dealing with some some pathogenic growth and too much production of typical gases that they may get some kind of response with the structured water, Kelly, at all? Yeah, great question, Joel. So the saturation of hydrogen is actually 1.6 parts per million, right? And so at that point, you're going to have all the hydrogen trying to escape. With, there's two caveats with those tablets. Is One, number one, is that they've been found to be contaminated with heavy metals and they've been pulled oh, from so many markets, right? That's great. So we, we do not want that. And I, there's, you can go and type that in and that's true facts there. So that's the number one thing. And the second thing is, is that 
that super saturation of hydrogen, it's not, it doesn't even mimic like nature. And that's what I'm trying to get my point across is that we want to do things that mimic nature. And that's why the structure of it, 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 it you increase the hydration. You you're just taking, the, you're sort of disassembling what's already assembled, right? You're not yes. adding new or, or out of there, right? That's right. And some of those natural springs, they have that molecular hydrogen. They do not have it at 1.6 parts per million. And some of those tablets are just so super saturated and it's like bombing yourself, right? It's right, just bombing right. yourself. And right. So that's why. So, so good. So then as far as clinical studies go, I'd be kind of interested to go down that a little bit. One of the things we teach our audience and our, our patient base is the importance of pH testing. Yes. Actually, very funny. I did a, a TikTok post at some point and said, hey, it's a great at home um, test to test your pH, your inflammation. And I got a bunch of nephrologists on there saying, you don't know what you're talking about and blah, blah, blah. But anyways, um, first and foremost, as far as pH testing goes, maybe you could speak with both hats on your holistic and your MD hat um, in terms of, is there utility out of testing your pH? And when you do your wheel water, do you see changes or is that part of any of clinical trials or what are some of the outcomes that you're actually measuring to determine that this is a selective antioxidant? Sure, I'll start with the latter, latter first, is that we do not manipulate the pH. There are some studies that are coming out with alkaline water and it not being um, helpful. Right, but that's a good point. So you're not actually changing the pH of the water, which a lot of people say, oh, it's a it's a high pH water. So or so let's drink that. But that's yeah. a great point, too, because I wasn't even asking about that. But thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're, we that's an important point is that we are not manipulating, again, the pH. We, you know, we there was that time when alkaline water was so sexy and so hot and and really it, it fizzled out because really you were getting the positive effects of having that little bit of molecular hydrogen in. And now we're looking at alkaline water and is it really that, you know, helpful? And the studies, I have a study I can send you, no, like it's 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 not helpful. But then back to your other question, I, I do like pH testing. I think that it, it's very important um, to know your body. I love anything objective like aura rings and anything objective you can get on your body or HRV, um, to, to help your health. And you want to make sure that you're not having like an, a really acidic, like there's a range and I'm sure Joel can, you can riff on that for a long time. Um, but you know, we want to be in that sweet spot and I haven't, I haven't seen pH change, um, with drinking the wheel water, but you would think that since it's selectively, um, scavenging hydroxyl radical, we're having a NERF2 activation. We're producing water. Like you said, like end product is water. Um, perhaps we'd have more of a normalization, but I, but I haven't seen that. And in, in you asked about clinical trials. I haven't seen that as uh, an outcome in the, right. in the clinical trials in humans, right. but really interesting question. Yeah. So just for people that might not understand the connection, the tissue oxygenation is a measure of pH and the less oxygen, the more acidic, the lower the pH. And when you're getting more hydrogen and oxygen combining together to produce water instead of free radicals, you're going to increase your tissue oxygenation and hence you're going to increase your pH. So that's why it's important to test your pH so that you can see first, are you acidic? And if you are, um, then chances are microbes are abundant, heavy metals, um, lots of environmental pathogens that are producing these the, the need for structured water in the first place. Um, very interesting stuff. So as far as um, the clinical outcomes that you are doing, how are you measuring? Like, what are some of the variables that you're measuring? Are you doing metabolic profiles? Are you looking at um, other inflammatory markers? Are you looking at cytokines? What, what are you actually doing? Just kind of curious. Sure. So um, first, let's talk about the existing literature. So there's papers done um, in humans. Again, everything that says clinical, that always means in humans, which is the gold standard, right? You have to have gold standard um, to make any sort of claim. Um, there's been studies um, showing an increase in telomere length, um, DNA methylation changes. So that's all your anti-aging. So again, the mechanism of there's a, I mean, there are so many proposed mechanisms of molecular hydrogen beyond being a selective uh, antioxidant and again, cell signaling and all kinds of different pathways, which are very fascinating to nerds like us, Dr. Joel. Um, but really the end game is, is like when I'm drinking this, what is it doing for me? So again, there's anti-aging papers, there's exercise performance papers, um, 
one of the things is that looking at the markers of inflammation, like you said, some of those inflammagens, IL-1 beta, TNF alpha. Now, this is the caveat is that when, when you are inflamed, if I'm inflamed and you're inflamed, I could have migraines and eczema. You could have kidney disease and high liver enzymes. So really when you're looking at decreasing the root cause of disease, you're going to get a lot of different phenotypic expressions of what's it doing for me now. So that's a lot of people um, saying like, it helps with my gut. It cleared up my eczema. I don't have headaches. It's kind of all over the place um, with the effects because that's just how the body works. Like that's, that's, that's part of like our individuality. Um, so you kind of look at the studies. There was a study done in people with potential metabolic syndrome. So they didn't have metabolic syndrome yet. They didn't have um, all the, the, you know, the actually diagnosable, but they were close. And it showed that it actually helped reverse some of those glucose abnormalities, body fat um, indices um, being over, you know, over again. And it's like, you took that group of people, they were at risk for that and it helped with that. And I think it's that underlying mechanism where again, it's been shown to decrease some of those um, oxidative markers. Um, you know, there's, there's other studies, there's, um, there's a, an RNA seq that they did that's really high level looking into people's DNA and RNA expression. And it showed like some helpfulness in the immunity pathways. And that was through decreasing oxidative stress. Um, you know, right. again, it, there, it goes on and on about all the positive studies. Now, what we're doing is that, um, so I like to think, and thank you for, for telling me, telling the audience too, is I, I like to think futuristically. I like to think like cutting edge upon cutting edge upon cutting edge. So what are people doing at Harvard? What are they doing? What are they researching? What are they using? And so they're using a lot of these tests, like true diagnostics. They're using glycans. They're using that DNA, that uh, methylation, those really, uh, you know, we really didn't know about this not that long ago. So we're looking at using that kind of data. So your biological age. So I um, am X years old, right? And then I, you take your biological age and I happen to be like seven years younger. And you bet your butt I better be younger because I do about a million things, right? So we're looking at testing biological age in the people that are drinking the water and then biological age after three months. Um, those, those results should be around the corner for everyone, but who doesn't want to reverse their biological age that, I mean, that, I mean, and, and with that, we'll be looking at, um, again, immunity markers. We'll be looking at digestion, digestive health. Um, we'll be looking at, um, uh, some skin health because some people are actually applying the water topically and having good results with that. Um, and you know, right. there's all kinds of positive results to sleep. Yeah, that's awesome. If I'm a discerning, uh, citizen and I'm thinking about purchasing lifestyle enhancement, longevity optimization products, and I'm talking and I'm listening to an interview of a medical director for a company that really cares about validating what it is that they're doing. I, you're right. I don't almost need to know about the specific conclusions and what you know, journal article it's in, but I know that they're caring enough to, you know, to, to want to validate exactly what it is that they're doing. Um, and a great, great point too, Kelly, in terms of, I tell this to a lot of people as well, is this depends on where the weak links in the chain break, right? Because some yes. people will say, well, this does help my hair, or this helps my skin, and someone else may take it, and there it will help ultimately refill the bucket analogy-wise of the depleted holes in the bucket, you know, bottom of the barrel challenges that you have, but you may be replenishing, you know, flora for, for the microbiome that is not necessarily directly enhancing your hair and your skin. And you're like, well, it didn't work for me the way it worked for you. Of course it didn't. You're different. Um, everyone has different problems. Um, so great for, for highlighting that, because I think that's a major takeaway for people is depending on where your weak links break, meaning um, what are all the environmental factors that you're dealing with? How's your thought processes around those? Because they're very important. What are some of the genetic susceptibilities that you have? And then where do the weak links in the chain break when the consistent signaler inflammation, free radicals, because everyone does understand that it's an inflammatory thing at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, your cells aren't breathing properly. 
-hmm. right? They're not respiring properly. You're not converting the food into energy. As a result, you have all these free radicals that are supposed to come together, produce ATP and water, and you're not, you're dehydrated and you're sick and your weak links in the chain are breaking here versus there. So, um, mm -hmm. I mean, is there anything you wanted to add to that or? Yeah, yeah. yeah actually you, you brought up a point that I, I wanted to circle back to is that when we are using electrolysis, so that's the, basically you're splitting up the, uh, the, the water molecules with energy. We're actually creating energy. So we're creating electrons in the water. Um, and then, so, you know, when you're drinking the electrons there's studies to be done, but we're hearing a lot of like um, increased energy and that's kind of making sense with my, I have a, a bachelor in, in chemistry and, and biochemistry emphasis. And so it's kind of making sense with that, but everybody could use some extra energy. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't get your, the way that you're processing food and get all your metabolism right, but those electrons come in giving you a boost. And then they're also um, electrons are themselves antioxidants. Right, right. And the, the technology in the bottle from what I, what you're telling me, because it does take energy to create that energy, but it's not your energy. It's the it's the energy of the technology that's splitting that up so that it's liberating and creating the energy for you to be able to repackage it up and take care of some of the challenges you have in your body. So I guess the elephant in the room is what, what do these go for? What am I looking at if I'm purchasing these? I always feel like, you know what, that's a new thing that I'm doing. There's always sure. an elephant in the room you know and I, why don't we ever address that elephant so if i'm i would love to talk about yeah. this elephant because yeah. it's yeah. it's really important so when you go to the airport and you buy a bottle of fiji water how much does that fiji water cost at, at the airport probably what ten dollars now right $10. Like, yeah. okay what if no. you buy it at like the small uh, one yeah the, the supermarket let's just the fiji water the, probably yeah. what four, three, three, three or four dollars yeah okay so if you take that um times so three dollars. Let's say you bought one a day, three dollars, and you do it um, times one hundred and twenty days. So if you bought that Fiji water bottle, in about three and a half months later, you'd have paid for your entire wheel bottle, like, and then you're actually giving back to the environment because it's not. It, this is glass. This is reusable. Right. You're not right. getting the toxins in. So they sell for about 380, but really it's like your little tiny bottle of, of whatever you're drinking, you know, even if you got like Aquafina and it was only a dollar that adds up really quickly. So um, I'm also, um, we have a discount code that you can offer um, your, your for 10% off. And so, you know, you're helping the environment because and you're helping yourself with not getting all the plastics um, in there. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really durable. Again, right. I bring mine everywhere. I, I fly with mine. I mean, how much does it hold? Is it a liter? It, it holds. Um, yes, it is a liter. A liter. Right. 750, maybe a little more, or I think it holds. Um, let me circle back with that one. I'm not quite, I'm not exactly sure. I didn't mean to put you on the spot there. Yeah. I it really should know much. how much it's it holds. This much, this much yeah. here is how much it holds. Yeah. This, right. this much. This much. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Do they, do they, have you had any problems traveling with it or no, do they, uh, I've uh, taken it everywhere. I just had a friend take his to New Zealand and back. And we have all these really, really cool colors, co cool sleeves and stuff. Right. So, I mean, like my kids got these at school, you know, like, but right. and, you know, the people are like, Oh, that's, you know, that's really right. neat. And that, you know, and again, um, I just really believe in it is a, it's a, it's an expensive device, but really it's like, you have to drink water you just have to, to get over any, right. to keep What's yourself the, well. Yeah. Does it have like, um, uh, sorry to interrupt. Does it have a certain length of time that it's typically used for? Like, can you, is it five years, about, three About years? four, yeah. years. four about, years. If you're using it every single day, like right. every single day, you don't and miss what any happens, days. It's just, it's elect the, the ability to create that electrolysis is, is depleted or. Yeah, it's a hardware, it's a hardware issue. Like after right. about four years of continuous use every single day. Right. Right. Um, you know, right. and we, it actually has an app that you, you sync to your um, phone, you sync the bottle of your phone and it's like a, a hydration accountability partner. My, right. my wheel app will say, hey, you didn't uh, drink your water this morning because it knows you can electrolyze oh, it cool. with your, really? and it'll be like, Time That's to drink awesome. up and then it'll reward you to be like, good job. You drank your I, mom. Yeah, I love the gamification of things. That's really cool. Yeah. So basically we're talking about with the 10% off discount, less than a dollar a day. But you know, at the end of the day, um, you're, you know, cheap is expensive. And I understand people are, oh, are dealing with health challenges 
and they're spending a lot of money on on staying afloat, right? And and so they have to be very wise with their their decisions. And I would agree with you in terms of uh, the 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 value of getting good quality water, if not, like we said, just leaving this podcast and just stopping getting exposed and removing yes. the exposure of something. But I always say there's two sides of the coin. It's not just stop what you're getting exposed to, but introduce what you're not getting exposed to. And mm -hmm. really, that's what that is. So um, as far as I was like, I'm going to switch this up, this sort of a, a curveball. I always ask our guests sort of on on leaving. I usually ask them, hey, what do you wish you knew then that you know now? But where where is Kelly headed with um, what we owe or other um, innovative concepts? Or what do you see coming in the horizons um, with, with the research that you're doing? Maybe you can give us a, a primer on, on where where that's headed. Yeah, I love this question. So um, the, one of the easy answers is that we're coming out with a pet bowl. So that'll be fun because, you know, you start and it's, it's like a flowing fountain water and you start giving your animals this water. And I, you know, I swear like they, they won't go back to like regular reverse they osmosis. Snob, they get very they snobby and they, they get, do, they get yeah. real snobby with one yeah. in the wheel water and it's, yeah. you know, like gone when I set it in their bowl. Um, and, you know, also on the horizon is obviously doing a lot of clinical trials, really. I mean, we believe in science. We're like the global leader in water science research. We're all over the world doing this. We're continuing it. Again, if I showed you some of the scanning tunneling microscopy that our engineers and our scientists and our PhDs are doing, it just blow your mind because it's like we're just so deeply invested in, in agriculture and sustainability and, you know, trying to make the world a better place. And water is I mean, when we go looking for life on other planets, what are we looking for? Water, you yeah. know, I mean, like what is the most essential macromolecule? Water, we cannot live with without water. And so that yeah. is, is Do really- Do you remember the, the movie was Idiocracy? Did you ever see that yeah. movie? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's not too far off, but basically yeah. that movie was about pumping uh, like a Gatorade type uh, fluid into- into the crops and everyone was getting dumber and dumber and dumber. And as much as that's an exaggeration, um, it's not too far off from the truth. No. And not so much everyone's getting dumber, but everyone's getting more minerally depleted. Yes. Minerals really power up our our body. And I always say, Kelly, if you're not creating energy, you're creating exhaust. If you're not creating income, mm -hmm. you're creating an expense. It's not one and the, it's one or the other. It's not if, right? So right. flip that metabolic switch. Um, awesome information. So what we're going to do is you're going to, we don't have it yet, but you're going to provide me with the discount link so yep. that we can give the audience 10% off. And then um, what do they, if there's any uh, uh, other ways that they might be interested in following you or um, following Wayo, what are some of the, and I can put these in the show notes as well, but yep. how would they hear more about what you do and your book coming up and all that kind yeah. of stuff? So we are on social media as in Wio. So you just go to um, Wio and Instagram. Which is W-E-O, right? W-E-O. Right. Wio is for the ones we love. That's what we think of. Wheel waters for the ones we love. Okay. So we're everywhere. Just type us in. We're on every social media cha uh, channel. We have a, an amazing social media guru marketers. Like she's just terrific. Um, I personally am at Dr. K.M. Halderman on Instagram, like my personal stuff and like the work we did with um, uh, Dr. Eric Balcavage on the thyroid debacle and all that, on all that stuff is, is on my um, personal, but if reach out to me, like if you have questions about it, if you want to know more about it, um, you know, like I am a skeptic at heart. I don't believe anything. I'm sorry. I just don't, I don't believe any, but I think like everybody's my enemy until they're my friend <laughs> or, you know, like everything is a, is a scam until it's not. And right. I, I just literally like fell in love with this, the company, the technology, what we're doing for the world or what we're, so just, you know, like, even if you don't buy a bottle, just support us. Cause I put out a lot of really good content on all things like water hydration, like what, how right. you can do better, even just on like tap water and stuff. So, right. and what about, like, what's the book? Do you have another one coming out? Yeah. Phase 2.5. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, how do you have time? I mean, what, maybe we can have a whole podcast on how you have the time to do everything that you're doing. I'd like well, to you know. Too. I yeah. think about that for you too. You do a lot. Yeah. And you put yeah. a lot of amazing content out there. So yeah, I appreciate you're, you're, it. Yeah, I appreciate it. We'll have to do part four when, okay. when the next technology comes out, but thank you so much for spending yeah. your time and educating our audience and providing the discount links and continuing to 
be passionate about the ones you love. And I appreciate everything that you do, Kelly. Thank you so much. Thank you. You too, Dr. Joel. Take care. Take care. Hey there, I hope you're getting tremendous value out of our videos. If you are, make sure you like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, turn on your alert buttons, and then check out the description below because I have a free masterclass that will teach you how to 10x your energy levels in the next 12 weeks and finally end your energy and exhaustion nightmare.